Welcome back to the reading of I'm Ass, A Suicide Survivor by M.J. Forrest. You can pick up your own copy through Amazon for yourself or for someone else even, if you'd like. Last week, we heard that he beat bulimia. What's going to happen? There was quite a commotion going on with the spectators booing and calling out things that Donkey himself had heard spoken to him before, such as, Go away! We don't want you and you're no good! He wondered what was going on out there outside the ring. He couldn't really see much because of the big spotlights overhead that shined down into the ring, bathing the outside of the ring in shadows. What he did see looked almost like a ghost coming closer to the ring. It was white and round-looking. But that was all he could see other than all the spectators looking like shadows themselves. Donkey looked almost fascinated as he watched a strange looking character enter the ring. He could see the brown hair that was pulled back into a ponytail on top, made some time ago. There were wisps of hair flying all about. Her, ears, her eyes were sleepy looking and she had a smile on her large round face that also served as her body. She looked like a white penny with arms and legs wearing green shorts. Her hands were already bound with boxing gloves, and he knew this was to be his next fighter. The referee walked to the middle of the ring and shouted out to all, This here is the next and third contender with Donkey. Her name is Phyllis the Pill. Some of you may know her, no one here loves her, and we sometimes wish she had never existed. She may be small and quiet, but she can creep up on you like a London fog rolling in a night. More of us than are willing to admit have been taken by surprise from her evil ways and lies. Getting sucked in the belief in the head are the ones that make one feel lost. The feelings of worthlessness magnify by anyone that those previous words came from that didn't bother now create an avalanche of misconceptions of self. It is felt strongly of statements bombarding the mind. Statements that don't belong in the mind now come to stay in the mind. I am worth less than anyone else. I am not needed. I can't do anything right. I'm not worthy of anything good. No one likes or loves me. No one will miss me when I'm gone, and many more. Strong questions come flooding into the mind as well. Will anyone miss me? How shall I kill myself? What shall I use to kill myself? Am I strong enough to kill myself? And many others. You need to be careful in the ring with her, for she can give you a pretty god good punch when she is ready. Again, I tell you all to be ready for another exciting match with Donkey. So far, he has given us a good show. Before the ring of the bell, he drank from his water bucket so that so thought so thoughtfully the girl put there and filled each time he needed it. The girl wiped the sweat from his face and rubbed his shoulders again. Donkey looked over at Phyllis in her corner. She looked back at him with a wide, evil grin. She, looked, she lifted her short wisp of eyebrows a few times quickly, as if to say, Just you wait. This is going to be fun. Donkey felt nervous and unsure of himself. This was the one about pills that he had to beat. What was it that made her so sure about herself all this time? The referee hadn't said. He had just said that she was a liar. What kind of lies had he been told? How had he felt? And with that, we're going to stop there and take up again next week. And I hope this reading will help at least one person out there. And I'll see you next week. Thank you for listening. Bye.